This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. All right, welcome to the future, time traveler. And this time, you may have had like a, another vodka and Red Bull or another coffee or whatever. But finally, our Backtrack 5 installation is finished. We've got this screen up, installation complete. But before we're ready to restart, we've got a few things we got to take care of. So click continue testing. Now, our first item of importance is that we just installed Grub onto DevSDB or whatever your USB device is, but that's the same place where we grabbed our bytes for our key file, right? So it's quite possible that some of those bytes may have changed, especially if you were grabbing bytes at the very beginning of the device. So while we're at it, let's just rerun our key derivation algorithm, if you want to call it that, I guess. Uh, block size one, count was 64, offset was 32, skip, sorry, it's 32, and we'll call this one second.key. Okay, so we copy our 64 bytes out. Uh, let's do a SHA-1 sum and see if they're different. It looks like they are. Okay, not a big deal because we've been using Lux, and Lux is awesome because there's this flexibility where you can have multiple keys that decrypt the same encrypted content. So, we're going to do crypt setup again, uh, dash D for our key file. And remember, we had our first dot key, that was the first one that we used. So we're going to be specifying that as our key file to do the original unlock. And we're going to be using the command Lux add key. Again, our target is dev sda1, and our new key file is going to be second.key. Now, this is important because um, if we try to go back and like boot the system and use our USB device with the same key creation process, we get a different key, we wouldn't be able to decrypt our Backtrack 5 install. So we've just added our new key file, um, and we should be almost ready to roll. Uh, let's do a couple more items while we're at it. All right, let's make some mount points. So we're going to do make dir slash mount, and we'll do hacktop. Um, and let's mount uh, dev mapper hacktop on this new mount point, hacktop, mount hacktop. And then we'll mount um, our USB device partition, dev sdv1 in this case, on mount hacktop boot. And we are ready to change root into our new Backtrack 5 environment. All right, so you can notice that the, uh, that the prompts changed. This means we're working inside of our Backtrack 5 installed environment instead of the live environment now. Let's go ahead and mount our proc and sysfs file systems because we're gonna be running um, update init ram fs and updating the init ram disk and we wanna make sure that those boot um, and subsequent boots or those load and subsequent boots. So we have two files to edit. The first one that we're going to do is uh, Etsy Crypt tab. Oh, and um, while we're at it, we need to get our block ID. In a new tab, if you haven't, uh, if you didn't do this before, because I didn't do it before, we need to get the GUID of our target uh, partition. So that's DevSDA1. So we use this block ID um, program, and we get our GUID here of DevSDA1. And we kick back over, and we do uh, our target name, which was Hacktop. Our source device is dev disk by UUID, and then our GUID. Key file is going to be none, because we'll be deriving our key file at boot time. And options are going to be Lux, because that's what we're using. Lastly, we just need to edit the FS tab direct or uh, file. We don't need our floppy, so you can delete that line if you don't need it. Um, and instead of the GUID, what we're going to be doing is just specifying the generic device. This allows you in the future to use another USB drive if you lose your original and you have a backup stored somewhere um, or for whatever other reasons. But uh, so we just enter our dev SDV1 as being our device that has our boot partition on it. So at this point, we're pretty much set up and ready to roll. Um, if you're on VMware, uh, I'm going to halt and use an alternate boot manager to be able to boot off the USB device. But if you're using bare metal, um, you won't need to do any of that. Just make sure that you go into BIOS or UEFI and set uh, your USB device to boot at a higher priority than your hard drive. And you should be good to go. So we're going to halt and um, we'll be back in just a moment. If you're in VMware, um, like I'm using um, I'm using Plop to be able to boot from a uh, USB device. 
So you just set your plop ISO as your CD-ROM drive and select your USB device. And we will soon be booting off of our boot partition that we installed to our removable media. Fingers crossed if everything is working out well, um, you should start seeing like Linux diagnostic stuff booting up, right? Like it's all the, all the messages that you'd see in dmessage. Um, everything's loading. It's looking good so far. Um, but then all of a sudden we get this like splash screen with our Backtrack 5 wallpaper and nothing's happening. So um, what's actually going on is outside of our site right now. So we're going to kill X real quick. Uh, to do that is just control alt backspace. It'll drop you to the console. Oh, there it goes. Okay, cool. You hit control alt backspace, it kills X and then it drops you back to the console. Um, if it starts prompting for a passphrase, uh, just do control C until it drops you into BusyBox. In this case, it dropped me directly into BusyBox, which normally doesn't happen, so I'm not sure why, so we'll see what happens. But anyways, once you're in BusyBox, you can do your key derivation algorithm again. So we're, do we're gonna do a DD, and again, block space is one, count is 64, and the offset, skip his 32. And then we are ready to write that out to a file. So we grab our 64 bytes, we do our crypt setup, uh, lux open again is the command that we did earlier, dev sda1 is our target partition, and then our, our map target is hacktop. So if everything goes well, the key slot should unlock, which you may or may not get a warning, because like if you do this in Ubuntu, the newer versions, they don't give you like a, like, the, the, the key slot unlock, they don't give you any message about that, but um, they just drop you directly into the shell and there's like no complaint. In this case, we do see that the key slot one was unlocked. And once you're back into your busy box shell at the prompt, you can just do control D and that will bail out of the shell and run you straight into your um, boot process. So um, in a moment, however long, depending on how fast your laptop is, mine's not the fastest. Um, it will continue booting the Backtrack environment and you are ready to go. There we are. There's our uh, Backtrack login. Root and Tor obviously is the default. And if we start X, um, bam, there we are. So now we are inside of our Backtrack 5 environment that we installed to our target hard drive or solid state drive or whatever, dev SDA1. But the partition is encrypted. I mean, we've decrypted it now, but it's encrypted at rest. So it's pretty cool, like that is your encrypted root install with Backtrack 5. Have any questions, like, because uh, it's kind of a long process and obviously you can get hung up somewhere, definitely go back and pause and, you know, make sure all the steps were followed step by step. Um, but like, uh, feel free to hit me up online, like I'm more than happy to help out. This is how you can see, like, there's your dev mapper target. But uh, anyways, hit me up online, I'm at Dual Core Music on Twitter. Uh, if you want to check out like our rap songs about happy, hacking and happily rapping and stuff like that, dualcoremusic.com. Uh, if you're on the Hack5 forums, I'm int80 on the forums. And if you've got questions, comments, uh, fedoras or bonnets, email us, feedback at hack5.org. Trust your techno lust. Hack 5's 11th season is here and we are so happy to let you guys know that Domain.com has now been sponsoring us for three years. They are our favorite domain registrar and the truth is we couldn't be happier with them. In fact, Hack5.org is running on them right now. Check this out, find new domain names, add new domains to your portfolio, manage your company's domains, do a little hacking. We love Domain.com. If you need a host for your website, you can also set that up so quickly and easily. WordPress, Joomla installers, real simple, plus a bunch of other programs super easily. And get this, the women over at Domain.com. Yeah, they're huge fans of Hack5 too. I'm not kidding. In fact, if you tweet at Domain.com's Twitter and let them know that you're friends of Hack5, you might be lucky and get yourself a nice little cool Domain.com t-shirt. I'm serious, try it out. Don't forget, when you're at Domain.com, buying domain names, transferring your existing ones to them, use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout. Save yourself an extra 15%. When you think domain names, think Domain.com.
Ubuntu 12.04 LTS called Precise Pangolin will be releasing on April 26 with the official beta releasing tomorrow on March 1st. And because of this, we decided to get a first look at the new OS updates. Now this version is LTS, long-term support, so we're going to be seeing updates for it for a while, while now, which means that it's a really good option for you guys that need it for work purposes. There have been some modest improvements on the back end with some features, like the update from Linux kernel 3.0 to 3.2, and some built-in updates. So let's see, we got roll out T. R. Yep, 3.2.0, oh, awesome. Brand new update to the kernel. I know a lot of you guys were excited about that. Rhythmbox is the music player of choice. And then there's Firefox, Thunderbird, LibreOffice. They've all been updated and included in the download package. There's also been a few small updates to Unity. The slide out left hand toolbar isn't as annoying and I downloaded my Unity to add some customization to the GUI. And it's a pretty cool thing to check out. It's called My Unity. I ran into a slight problem when playing when you, with Unity where comp has crashed as I was going through the quick lists, which by the way, they can be selected with one right click now. So you just hover and right click. You have this nice, nice sidebar over here. Very, very useful for anybody who would need that kind of stuff. Hopefully comp has won't be as buggy when the beta officially releases. Of course, this is just a daily build that I'm testing after all. So I figure they'll fix that by then. My favorite cha change, and oh my god, I was so excited about this, my Broadcom wireless adapter. Yeah, I know it's a Broadcom, but you know, it's what came with my computer, so I had to deal with it. It works. It just works. It works right out of the gate. I didn't have to go into the command line and do any kind of wacky, crazy stuff that Darren usually does. It magically downloaded the drivers and connected to my local wireless router in seconds. No need for an Ethernet cable. And I consider that completely awesome. I mean, it's using a non-open source driver, but hey, religion aside, it's really good to see that it's just working. That's awesome. So that's a definitely like a plus 10 for me. Now on to the big name for 12.04, the HUD. HUD stands for Head Up Display, and it was announced by Mark Shuttleworth on his blog. Here's the idea. We're all used to menus and toolbars and whatnot. They've been around since the dawn of computers. They've just gotten shinier and more colorful. Yay! And we're all used to them. You always find the same menu options in all of your programs in the same place. You can generally find what you want just from experience. You know, file, save as. It's always there. But sometimes menus suck. You have to use your mouse, and if you get into the nested menus and you click the wrong thing, you have to go back through all of the submenus to find what you need. That happens to me all the time in bookmarks, for example. And you know what you need. It's just a pain in the butt to get there. Also, I'm not a fan of hotkeys. Yeah, I, can, I know. I can never remember them, and I know it's frustrating for Darren whenever I'm learning something new, and I'm using my mouse to get through everything. Yeah, I know it takes a while. Sorry, Darren. It's cool, man. So while he's standing over there and saying like, oh, just hit Control, Shift, Escape, Alt, F2, and there you have it. I'm sitting over here with my mouse going through everything, and yeah, it takes forever. I know. So yeah, we need some new innovation. Albeit, this isn't completely innovative with voice commands and search menus that we currently have in the world, but it is something that we've been waiting a while for, whether you know it or not. I know a lot of people hate change. I mean... No one liked Unity when it came out, so Canonical might have an issue getting users to use and like the new HUD, the head-up display. For myself, though, someone who hasn't really fallen completely in love with any kind of version of Linux yet, I think it's beautiful and it's fast and shiny and new. I mean, I welcome the new HUD overlord. Why not? Other than they would be an overlord. Not too good, huh? So, what's it look like? Might as well show you, huh? Just hit Alt while you're in some kind of standard Ubuntu app. For example, I'll go into Firefox right now and hit Alt. You can use either the left or the right Alt. It does not matter. And you pull up this very cool little search bar thing up, the, up at the top, top. And you can type in any kind of word that you would generally find in the toolbar. For example, uh, save or print, open or quit. I'll type in save. And it takes me to view, file, messages, clear, Ubuntu one, and set up mail. I could also type in uh, new. 
and it'll give me these different ideas, create new wireless network. Okay, so here's a good one, file, I typed in tab because I wanted a new tab, and it gives me new tab. And then I can just arrow up and down and click enter to bring up my new tab. Very easy. You'll get this list of options. It's most likely something that you wanted and you choose the one that you need and you're done. It's much faster than navigating to the file menu with the mouse. And here's something cool. It can actually learn what you usually do. So it'll prioritize your list by the things you'll mo most likely use. For example, I was using mine earlier to cut on my new wireless network up here. Ta-da! And when I hit Alt and I typed in something for Firefox, it automatically thought maybe I'm considering something in the, in the uh, navigation menu for wireless settings. So it brought me there. Kind of neat. So I can see how this HUD is going to be a great idea. I think it still needs a little bit of tweaking. For example, I like to choose close to close out of a program, but I had to type in quit because it had no clue what I wanted to do when I typed in close. So a couple of extra definitions that I think to need to be added, and I think it should still know what you know closing a window or a program is. It's an intuitive and a smart improvement, and I would love to see something like this become the norm. Maybe even making the normal toolbar completely disappear and give me more real estate on my screen, which would be awesome. I'm always looking for more real estate on my screen. Any kind of update that makes me my productivity faster and easier is A-OK -okay with me. Oh, and if you don't like it, you just don't press the Alt key. I know it's built in and a lot of people probably won't like it and they'll say, oh, I don't like that. Unity and now this HUD, what the heck is that? So just don't press Alt, it's OK. And have you tried Ubuntu 12.04 LTS yet? What do you think of the newly released head-up display and updates to the OS in general? Make sure you guys tell me about it in the feedback at hack5.org email, or you can comment in the section below. Coming up soon, we'll be answering your viewer questions, but first, I'm gonna play with this. We're gonna take a break, and then check in with Darren for the nibble. It's time once again for the nibble, and this week I thought I'd show you something that I just learned was said that is going to make your life so much easier when it comes to sorting and stuff. And here, uh, let's just dive right into it. I've got a karma log here, and as you can see, karma is enabled, and then I've got all these other associations. Well, that's great, but I wanted this to be backwards, upside down. I wanted it enabled at the bottom and all the latest stuff to be at the very top. Right? And well, I could do, have done it with a little JavaScript. I like doing stuff with Bash, and check this out. If I cat this and pipe it into sort, I can sort this and I want it to be in reverse, so sort tac r. Unfortunately, it groups everything together and as you can see, that's not what I wanted. But with a little bit of said, and yes, you can do this with awk, uh, it's just a lot more CPU intensive. Um, if I pipe this over to said and it's one bang, G, capital G, semicolon lowercase h, semicolon dollar bang, lowercase d, I now have it backwards. It says enabled at the bottom instead of enabled at the top. I know. It's fun. It's bash and it's what I've been doing for weeks and weeks and weeks. And if you've got fun commands and tools and nuggets to send over to us, head over to hack5.org slash nibble. Share us your four bits. I know Shannon loves hooking up people with all sorts of hack5 swag for sending those by. Uh, and now we'll be back in just a sec. We'll, we're already here. I don't know where we are. Let's do the thing, Paul. <laughs> 